think you would agree with me when I say that gambling is uh, big these days. I say that with sadness. But I want you to understand the lottery, for example, is more than a game. It is actually a way of looking at life. If you cannot get ahead through working and planning and brains, why not through chance? Life is chance, isn't it? Isn't the lottery just a parable of the way life works? Isn't life just a matter of luck, of being in the right place at the right time or the wrong place for that matter? It's a way of looking at life. Others, uh, other people feel that their lives are not by chance at all, but are very much under the control of some cosmic fate. They think that the planets guide their fortunes, so they read the horoscopes to see what Jupiter is going to do to them next. But if you believe in fate, you have no reason for taking initiative. There's a demoralizing inevitability in fate, isn't it? Yes, sir. You just give up. Whatever it will be, will be. Right? Preach, preach, preach today, preach today. But the Bible teaches another way of seeing our lives. The hand of God is at the helm. He is staring us through the storms of life toward home, toward a safe haven. And he takes care to order all the events of our lives right now to speed us on our way to heaven. This is what theologians call providence. God overruling, his overruling hand at work everywhere in a fallen world. The providence of God is the, is the underlying premise of everything that is taught in Holy Scripture. The biblical confidence in the providence of God is a, is a faith so bold, so demanding, so unapologetic that we cannot believe it halfway. We cannot believe it halfway. Either all things work together for our good or nothing makes sense. I'm going to say that one more time. Either all things work together for our good or nothing makes sense. We must either be transformed Christians or bitter skeptics. Because we cannot just sort of believe Romans 8. We cannot just sort of believe Romans 8, 28. We either believe it or we doubt it. There's no middle ground with Romans 8, 28. A personal, pro, a personal confidence in God's providential love in all things, including bad things, very powerful. It does make a difference, you know. There's a story told in the early 1740s. A ship was sailing from England to, to Georgia. On board were 26 German Moravian missionaries, men, women, and children. During their journey across the Atlantic, as they were holding a worship service, a storm broke out. The English passengers screamed in pain. But these Christians looked up and calmly sang on. An English, pas an English passenger later asked, were you not afraid? The answer, I thank God, no, said one of the Christians, no, I was not afraid. But were not your women and children afraid? The answer was no, our women and children are not afraid to die. 
The person asking the question, his name was John Wesley. All right, all right. All right. Well. <laughs> and those Christians demonstrating the transforming power of the gospel in the middle of a storm were instrumental in the conversion of, of one of history's great evangelists. Yes, yes, yes. Preach, preach. Preach. All around us every day are potential evangelists and, and scholars and pastors and missionaries and social reformers and writers and doctors and influential Christians of all sorts all around us every day. We know them right now as our non-Christian friends. <laughs> and God has positioned us in the midst of our storms to show them the practical difference that Jesus makes. Preach. What would our lives look like if we feared nothing but God? What difference would it make if we no longer feared truth, the cost of discipleship, repentance, change, the future? What difference? would it make? What difference would it make if we, if, if we fixed our desires not on popularity and money and predictability and, and control, but what, what difference would it make if we fixed our desires on being conformed to the image of God's Son? Mm, preach, Pastor. Preach. Mm. What do fearless people look like? <laughs> do you know any? They look like German M M Moravian missionaries on a little wooden ship in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean when a storm threatens to drown them all and they calmly sing on because they believe in the providential love of God. That's what they look like. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes. And when people like that appear in this fearful world, they make Jesus an unavoidable issue to others. Fearless people are influential people. Yes, sir. Fearless people stand out. Yes, sir. Don't. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. Absolutely. Fearless people are convincing. Yeah. Down deep in your heart, wouldn't you love to be unleashed to live boldly for the Lord? Preach. Preach, Pastor. Wouldn't you love to be intimidated no longer? Wouldn't you love to be upright and courageous for God? Wouldn't it be satisfying to live right out loud? <laughs> no matter what anybody preach faster. Let the whole world see the difference that Roman 828 makes in the lives of normal, real life affirming people. <clears throat> may by God's grace we draw many John Wesley's to Christ as we live out the courage yeah. of Romans 8, Please, Lord. 28. Like those missionaries on that ship, we're not afraid of anything because we know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to, to, to his purpose. We're not afraid of anything because we know. Yes, sir.